This is part two of my Create a UX case study series, and today we're going to talk about competitor and user research, why they're important, how to conduct it, and more. Stay tuned. Welcome back, guys. If you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Morgan. I'm a UX designer who works in the financial services industry, and I make videos about UX design, my career, how I got here, how you can get here too. So if that kind of content interests you, make sure to subscribe. So today is going to be about user and competitor research. Research is essential to UX design. In a company, you may not need to conduct research by yourself, especially bigger companies. They usually have user researchers that are dedicated to research, but you need to know how to prioritize problems that need to be solved and opportunities that need to be explored. Then you also need to know how to take action on research. Researchers aren't going to come to you and tell you what to design. They're going to show you their findings and possibly give you recommendations, but it's up to you to solve the problem and create the designs. Now this is for beginners who are looking to be become UX designers, so you may not have a research team at your disposal, but who knows, maybe you know someone who needs to get research experience and you can team up. More than likely, that's not the case, so you're going to have to conduct the research yourself. And the reason for that is you need to be able to demonstrate that you know how to design based on research. It doesn't matter whether you like it, it doesn't matter whether you want to do user research in your work. It may not be up to you, but the point is, is that you're gonna to have to deal with the findings and it's part of being a UX designer. Even if you're like, oh my God, I don't wanna do research, I just wanna design, totally get that. And I feel like most UX designers get like that, but it doesn't really matter because when you're in an interview and your interviewer asks you about your design process, it's much more compelling to tell a story about an actual project that you conducted yourself and you conducted research and you can explain why you made certain design decisions and have it be backed by research, which is really, really important to have. I'm telling you now that if you don't put enough effort into your research, it will show because you'll be stumbling over questions when they ask you about your design decisions and you won't be exemplifying your full potential and you won't be as successful as I know you could be. So now that we understand the importance of solid research, let's get into it. And in case you guys forgot from my last video, I will be using my UX design workbook slash guidebook. You can get that on my Etsy shop if you're interested. User research is exactly what it sounds like. You're identifying your users' pain points, wants, needs, goals, motivations, how they are tr currently trying to solve the problem, and whatever else is relevant to your project. You're trying to get to the truth with your user research about how they currently solve their problems or what their problems actually are. So you wanna stay away from leading questions and don't just go through the motions of asking a question and writing it down or anything like that. Like you should really try to get to the problem, you should get to the truth because that's the whole point, otherwise you're wasting your time. And the truth may take you completely away from your original hypothesis and you have to be open to that because unfortunately that's the real world of UX design. And I promise that if you talk about that during an interview, which I did for the job that I got, and you show that this is what I thought this is what I found and I was totally wrong and I had to change everything. It's what happens in real life and showing that you're able to handle that and deal with it is a huge plus. In my workbook, link in the description, there is a section for your research goals as well as your research strategy. It's very, very simple. It's nothing crazy. It's just something that will sort of remind you that you can look back at and you can just be reminded about what the purpose of the research actually is in case you ever get lost. So I personally like to start my research with user surveys. I think it's a good way to get general information about your users and it'll set you up nicely for your user interviews. Surveys are good to get data from like a large sample because user interviews are so time consuming that you can only get so many people. When with a survey, you just create the survey and you send it out. The downside is that you don't get as much detailed information as you do with user interviews because you can't probe or have a conversation. Once you have some foundational data from your user surveys, you can start writing your user interview questions. Remember your goals of your user research. What are you trying to identify? Make sure your questions are valuable, not leading, and open-ended. Try and understand pain points, how your users are currently trying to solve the issue at hand or the opportunity at hand, and so on. You could even observe them trying to solve the problem that you're trying to solve with your product, depending on the situation. I recommend that you write a script beforehand. I have sort of a template in my workbook and it really just helps you stay on track 
and effectively communicate to your participant what you're trying to achieve. It doesn't need to be included in your case study. It probably shouldn't be, um, but it's just good to have. So another really effective way to conduct research is with data analytics. So if you're doing a freelance project or you have a friend that has a website or maybe you have a website, you can track how users are interacting with that site and then make decisions based on that data. Not a lot of people do this in their case studies, so that could totally set you apart. This video is not sponsored, sadly, but you guys know that I love the usable analytics. I have two videos about how to use their projects. Go check them out if you're interested. I also included a couple of pages in my work book for data visualization so when you get that information you can easily include in your case study how that data actually looks. In your case study you should highlight anything unexpected, impactful, or interesting. Once you've conducted your user research you can move on to your competitor research. The order in which you conduct your research really depends on the project. If you're working with a business they might give you a list of competitors that you should look into. So in that case, it might make sense to do competitor research first to get an understanding of the market. I like to conduct user research first when I'm doing solo projects because then I'm able to conduct competitor research on products that the users say that they use or things that relate to what they were saying because otherwise it might be biased. So like if I was coming up with um, an expert app I've mentioned that a few times. That's what I did in my boot camp. I was looking at literal, like I had already decided on what the solution is, and that's what you're trying to avoid here. So I decided that the solution was an app in which you could speak to an expert through video chat or call or whatever. Um, and that's really not how you should go about it. People told me that they used Google and YouTube or they used certain websites to learn things. And that's what I should have looked into. I should have looked into what they mentioned, but instead I looked into things that matched what I had already decided what the solution is. And you guys should really avoid that. And throughout the research process and the entire design process, honestly, research doesn't just stop. <laughs> you, you research throughout the entire process, um, but you can flip back and forth. You know, you speak to, maybe you do competitor research first, then you speak to a user, they mention something else, you do more competitive research, maybe it comes up with new questions for you to ask or a new survey you need to send out, and so on. But you really need to go based on where you feel you need more information. Anyways, competitor research is used for a few different reasons. It's to identify gaps, saturation, and inspiration. There's lots of types of competitor research. I'm going to focus on two in this video, and that's going to be the SWOT analysis and the UX analysis. But there are other kinds of competitor analysis, like feature matrices and conducting usability testing with your competitor's product. So that's sort of like a fusion of competitor research and user research. So SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. You research your competitors and you find out their strengths and weaknesses which is what they're good at and what they are not so good at. And then opportunities and threats are more external. So if I was designing for a tax filing software, an opportunity could be that more and more people are going online. And then a threat could be that the gig economy is making taxes more complicated for independent contractors and therefore a tax accountant may be necessary to file your taxes. A UX analysis is when you go through your competitor's product and you research the UX of it. So I made a list in case I forgot. Uh, you take note of the product's usability, layout, navigation, structure, compatibility, differentiation, and call to action. So is there a pattern that you've noticed across all of your competitors? Do the interaction patterns match the expectations of the target market? Is there anything that you should include in your product or avoid? Remember that there's not one way to do research. Make sure to focus on areas that are a little bit hazy, that are essential to your project, and make sure to try and get to the truth. If you're going to spend any money, I would invest in research. Pay people to take your survey, pay for SurveyMonkey, pay people to do usability testing or user interviews. This is really worth it. It is the foundation of your project. If you can do it for free, awesome. Maybe make a Google form. It depends on how niche your project is, right? So a social media app, you can maybe just put a poll or a link on your Instagram if you have a wide enough network. But if 
it's pretty niche and you can't get people through your social network, you may need to purchase something like SurveyMonkey. Because remember, you're not designing for yourself, you're not designing for your company or your boss, you're designing for the user. User research and competitor research is the only way to really get to the problems and the solutions. In the next part of the series, I'm going to take you through how to analyze this data and start making some design decisions. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave your portfolio link if you want it reviewed in the comments. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.